How many times have you looked at your tooling, specifically the beveling, and thought, man, I'm just not getting the definition. I'm not getting the depth. It's not as well defined as what you see in other people's work. Well, today I'm going to show you three things that I started doing specifically with my beveling that made a massive difference. And it's the one thing that more people comment on with my work than anything else. This is my secret that I haven't really told anybody. And today I'm going to share it with you. So let's jump in. It's a lot easier than you think. We're going to start by cutting it in half. That's going to be our dividing line. This half will be the well-defined area. This will be, let's call it the more traditional area over here. So with beveling, I think of it as a couple of different steps. Step one, I, I think of it as lining or outlining the project. Step two, I think of as shading and then redefining would be the third one. So I'm going to start just like I normally would. And the tool that I'm using here is a Berry King Steep Edge Beveler. The reason I like this particular uh, beveler, there's there's three of them. There's a large, there's a medium, and then I would consider it a tiny. Is because this particular beveler drives all the force straight down. It creates a very well-defined edge along the piece, whereas a more traditional beveler is going to give you a fade. And yes, I know I'm skipping a few. I'm going through and I'm hitting everything that I can reach from this angle. And I'll come back and pick up the others in a second. So I'm taking that bevel line straight up to our dividing line so that we can get a very clear delineation between the two different styles. All right, I think that side's done for now. We're gonna to move to a more traditional beveler. I'm gonna do that on both sides. So let's take a look real quick. I guess I should have shown you this in the beginning, but let me show you the difference in the two bevelers. Get that in the light so you can see. So you can see this one on this side over here has a much steeper edge to it. Whereas the one on the outside over here is a lot flatter. And what that's allowing me to do is just drive that force straight down, which creates a much more crisp edge. All right, so let's take a look. So you might be looking at it right now and going, well, that's got more shading in it than the other side. This looks more or less like it did when you started. In reality, that's true. This has more shading, this has more crisp lines, but we're not done yet. Remember I said, I think of it as three different stages. You have the outline, you have shading, and then you have redefining. So we just finished doing traditional beveling over here. Now we're going to switch over. We're going to use that same bevel and we're going to do it over here. So 
So now you can see it's starting to come into shape. It's not a huge difference right now, but we've got more well-defined edges over here than we do here. And it looks like I missed a couple of spots. So I'm gonna come back and get those. This side, it's just shading where this is more well-defined edges and shading. So I'm gonna drop back in here and get these couple of areas that I missed and we will move on to the next step. So now we've got the outlining and the shading done. We're gonna go back now, we're gonna do the, the background. That's a lot of times where you can lose a lot of your definition. So now we're gonna go through and we're gonna do the, the matting for the background. All right, so we've got the the right side lined in. We've got it outlined. We've done the traditional beveling on all of it, and we've backgrounded or matted the uh, the background here, and we've added some texture around the entire outline. The next thing that we're going to do is exactly what we normally would do, which is we're going to go in and add some detail to the actual design itself. Both sides are going to be exactly the same. The major difference between this side and this side is that we outline this one and we're going to go back and we're going to redefine it where this side is only going to get the, the traditional beveling. So for this one, we're going to be using uh, a pear shader. It's shaped like a thumbprint, but it's rounded on the bottom so it functions like a pear shader. So we got everything shaded in. Next, what we're going to do is going to put the flower center in. We're going to do some shading there. Uh, and then I think we're probably ready for the final touches on it. And then the very last thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to redefine all the edges. So really all that's left to do is three things. One, we need to lift the various petals, we need to put in the decorative cuts, and we need to redefine the edges on this side to crisp it up. We're going to start by lifting everything. We're going to do it on both sides, and then we'll jump over to the uh, redefining, and then we will do the, the decor decorative cuts. So this side is more or less done. We've got to put in the decorative cuts, but that's about it. On this side, we're going to go in and now we're going to do the redefining where we really crisp up the edges and redefine all the different lines and make sure they're, they, they finish their path, make sure they're nice and crisp. So let's go ahead and do that now. And to do that, I'm simply going back to the original steep edge beveler that I used to do it in the first place. So I'm going to show you something real quick. One of the things I'm making sure that I do is this is a good example right here. Let's make sure we can get that to focus. That line doesn't really complete right there. It fades. Let me see if I can find it. Here's another one right here. That one kind of got obscured and it got broken up. That's a stop for your eye. So as I'm going back and redefining these, these lines, that's one of the main things that I'm doing is I'm making sure that those lines complete their path.
Here's another good example. Look right here where this pedal, so it comes around and right now it dead ends right there, but I want it to drop down in that, that little pocket right there. So I'm gonna bevel that and bring it on down. Now let's add in our decorative cuts. And one of the tricks I'll show you with decorative cuts is if you're unsure of where you need to put them, take your stylus and gently trace them in. And when I first started doing decorative cuts, I really wasn't sure what they were meant to represent. Are they, are they, you know, something physical on the flower, like a stem or, you know, something like that sticking up? Or is this just flow lines or what are these? And after having several conversations with different people, um, I'm, I'm, my approach is that they are flow lines. Where do you want your eye to pull and draw to? So um, I like doing my decorative cuts with, um, with a traditional swivel knife instead of my uh, Dwayne Watts. This particular one has a much wider blade on it and I feel like I have more um, purpose with where those decorative cuts go. Well, that is it. You tell me which side you think has more definition. This is the side that we did the three-step beveling. This is the single-step traditional beveling. Let's, let's see if we can look at a couple of different areas. Look right in through here versus over here. Look at the edges here. Versus like right here, through here versus over here. So that's it. It's that easy. If you want to see more about how we did the extreme lifting, click on this video right here and I'll show you how we did that. See you next time.